Alright, hello everybody, and today we're going to be finding the surface area of a donut. So let's first of all draw up some axes. And what we want to do is we want to consider some circle that's offset, let's say, a distance of capital R away from the origin. And this circle will have some radius little r. And what we want to do with this circle is we want to revolve it around the y-axis. And if you do that, the shape you should generate is some kind of donut, which is exactly the shape that we're interested in. So there's my rough little sketch of a donut. So the idea to find the surface area of a donut is, let's take this point for example. What we want to do is consider small little strips that run around the donut like so. And these strips will be infinitesimally thin. And what we can do with each of these little strips, if we have an expression for them, we can use an integral to sum all of them up to get this total surface area of our donut. So if you imagine cutting each of these little strips, maybe like here, and if you unfold each of those little strips, what you should get is an, a rectangle. And our goal is to find the area of each of these little slithers here. So to find the area of this thing right here, we have to consider two things. We have to find the width and we have to find the length. And if you multiply those two values together, what you get is the area of the slither. So let's how about find the width of each of these little strips first. Well, let me draw up another picture here. So this is our offset circle that we drew at the very start. So it has a radius of, let's say, little r. Well, if you imagine this strip as being laid on top of the donut, and if you take the cross section of the donut, what you should see is the strip being something like this on our circle here. And notice we want to add all the strips up around the body of the donut. So what that corresponds to on our 2D diagram here is us adding all the strips all the way around the circle. And since we're kind of going around the circle, maybe it's a good idea to use theta as our variable of integration, so an angle in radians, because if we do that, we can have an expression for any single length along the circle. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, imagine you have a unit circle right here with some radius of one. And if you have an angle here, well, the arc length that makes from the x-axis is exactly theta. But in this case here, our circle has a radius of r. So that means everything is getting scaled up by r. So that means that our arc length right here is not only theta, it's r times theta because everything's getting scaled up by r. So if we have a look at our little strip here, and if we want to consider a small little change in our angle theta, so this angle right here is d theta, well, our width of our little slither here is r times d theta. So that's the first dimension of our little slither here. We can just put it down right here. So r d theta. Now we have to somehow find the length of these strips. So let's draw up another diagram here, similar to our first one. So if we have a circle here of radius r and the distance away from the origin um, to the center of our circle is bigger. And if we have a strip that's sitting right here, well, notice the length of each of these little slithers here is exactly the circumference of our green circle that I just drew. But to find the circumference of this green circle, what we have to find is its radius, so this length right here. And what that length corresponds to on this diagram here is exactly this distance. So from the y-axis out to this point right here. And let's call that distance lambda. So if we had some angle theta here, and remember theta is our variable of integration, that means our lambda here is equal to our radius right here. So r plus whatever this length here is so let's just call that question mark for now and notice that this right here is exactly a right angle triangle so if i draw out this triangle here so we have some angle theta here we have this length here our radius r and we have our question mark that we want to find or just using some basic trig we have cosine theta being equal to question mark over r 
and that means that our question mark is r cosine theta. So let's substitute this part into here. So our lambda in the end becomes r plus little r cosine of theta. So that means that this radius here is r plus little r cosine theta. But remember, we want to find the circumference of our green strip here. So what we have to do is multiply this r plus little r cosine theta by 2 pi. And what that will give us is the distance around the circle, which corresponds to the length of our little slither here. So in the end, this length here becomes 2 pi times r plus little r cosine theta. So now we have the dimensions of our little rectangle here. All that's left for us to do is to multiply these two values together to get our area of our slither. So our area of our little slither becomes 2 pi r plus little r cosine theta r d theta. So now this is the general formula for each of these little slithers we want to find and now what we have to do is take the integral of them. But before we do that we have to figure out where our theta starts and where our theta ends. Well if we take theta to start over here, our slither will cover the equator of our donut. And if we sweep our theta all the way from zero, all the way around the body of our donut, over to 2 pi, well that's going to hit every single point of our donut, which is what we want. So our area of our donut becomes the integral of 2 pi r plus r cosine theta r d theta, and we're evaluating that from 0 to 2 pi. So notice we're integrating with respect to theta here, that means this 2 pi and this r are just constant, so we can just bring that out to the front. So we have 2 pi little r integral from 0 to 2 pi of r plus little r cosine theta d theta, and we can integrate each of these parts individually, so we have 2 pi r integral of r becomes capital R times theta, and then we have here, r sine of theta. And we're evaluating that from 0 to 2 pi. Well, notice if you plug 0 into here, we get 0, and if you plug 0 into this sine, we have sine of 0, which is just 0, so this whole thing disappears. So we can ignore this 0 right here, and all we have to do is plug in this 2 pi into our theta. So what we have is 2 pi r, and then another 2 pi big R. And then if we plug 2 pi into our sine of theta here, well, sine of 2 pi is the same as sine of 0, but sine of 0 is 0, so this whole thing just disappears. So in the end, what we get is, well, these 2's will come together to make 4. We have 2 pi's here, so we have a pi squared, and then we have a little r and a big R. So this is our final formula for the surface area of a donut, where our little r is the radius of um, the body of our donut, you could think about it like that, and our big r is the distance um, from our origin out to the middle of the body of the donut. So just for something extra here, sometimes it's useful to think of the donut in terms of uh, two different parameters. So if you take a look at the donut from a bird's eye view, what you should see is something like that. And at the moment our two parameters, little r and big r, represent these two distances. So our big r is the distance to kind of like the center line of the donut, and our little r is the radius of the body of the donut. While sometimes it's better to think of our donut in terms of two new parameters, namely the distance to the smaller ring and the distance to the bigger ring. And we'll just call those distances uh, b and a. Well, if we want our expression for the surface area of a donut to be in terms of those two new parameters, all we have to do is a little substitution. So let's first of all convert our big R and little r into b's and a's. Well, first of all, notice if we want to find the length of this big radius here, all we have to do is get our r and then add it to this extra little radius here to get our b value. And if we want to find our a, which is the distance of the smaller radius, all we have to do is take the difference of big R and little r. And if you solve those two systems of equations, what you should get is 2r being equal to a plus b. That's if you add those two equations. And if you subtract the two equations, you should get 
2 times little r being equal to um, b minus a. I'll just write the results this way. So from those two equations here, we have r being equal to b plus a over 2 and little r being b minus a over 2. And notice in our expression here, we have little r times bigger. So if we multiply these two equations together, we have uh, little r times bigger being equal to b minus a, b plus a, and then on the denominator we have 2 times 2 which is 4. And notice this is just the difference of two squares. So if I write about this, little r times big r just becomes b squared minus a squared over 4. And if you substitute this thing in for little r times big r, this is the same as 4 pi squared times b squared minus a squared over 4. These 4s will cancel. And what you should end up with is pi squared times b squared minus a squared. So this is the second result for today's video. So just to reiterate, our b's and a's on this diagram um, represent these two distances. So our b is the big radius and our a is this smaller radius right here. So those are the two formulas that you can use to find the surface area of any donut. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see everyone next time.